Hi, I'm Anne Luan Stewart. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm looking for something called the SNP site. SNP, we call it the SNP site. It's single nucleotide polymorphism. It's basically a site on the DNA, which is like a single nucleotide is actually different in the genome of the same organism. Um, how you would actually find it. Let's say you would take several of the same kind of animal or organism and you would actually extract the DNA from that particular or organism on several different ones. Let's say you would take like 20, 30 chickens or 20, 30 dogs and you want to extract DNA from, from a specific tissue, you would use the same tissue every time, which in this case we used blood, the uh, chicken blood in order to, um, to um, extract the DNA from that. And then what you have to do is you have to purify the DNA. Once you get the DNA, um, you have to design a primer because you're looking at a specific piece of the DNA so you just want a small section and um, once you figure out what what section you want to actually study you would you would actually design the primer to to amplify that specific area and then you would run that through a gel once you're finished with the PCR you would run that through an agrose gel cut out the area that is highlighted in the agrose gel and then purify it and today we're on the purification process of how to extract the DNA from an agrose gel and um, I'm going to run you through that process. It actually takes, um, I've already extracted the DNA, I've already ran the gels and um, basically I'm on the part where we're actually extracting, um, purifying the, the DNA from the agrose gel and we're actually using this kit hygiene kit and there you go that's the catalog number on it and, and all of this stuff is pretty expensive I, I, I have to admit that science isn't cheap but um, it's as time goes on these kits are going to get less expensive um, catalog number 28104 it's from um, Kyogen you can actually order that yourself um, but I'll kind of take you through the process and uh, let you let you kind of comprehend um, what the SNP site is and how you actually go through the process of searching for the SNP site. So let's get started. Since the completion of the mapping of the human genome in the year 2003, we've, they found nearly 10 million SNP sites in the human genome. Um, basically these, these are only 1% of human DNA is different from human to human. And, and, and that one specific percent um, is basically what gives us our differences. And it also uh, contributes to our genetic diseases. So SNP sites have become very important in um, searching for um, genetic diseases and different genetic variations uh, among the, the different people, different organisms, different, um, different life, forms of life. Um, this video is, is wanting to teach you how scientists are actually identifying those SNP sites, how they're actually finding them, seeking them out in the genome. Um, is, is actually a, it's a very interesting lab procedure. It has several steps. Um, and we're wanting to take you through some of those steps. Uh, the first step is is having multiple organisms of the same kind. Um, multiple could be people, could be multiple chickens, uh, multiple dogs, cats. Um, just basically a living creature could be a plant. Um, but this basic process can be used the same way you you extract the DNA from the tissue could be any tissue needs to be the same tissue um, or it works best if it is the same same tissue once the whole genome DNA is extracted um, the the next process that you would take it into would be designing a primer for a specific area and um, that goes back to the NCBI website um, which can be very helpful if you want to look at a specific gene or a specific area on the DNA. Um, 
search for an area where you think there could be a possibility of a SNP site. We're actually searching in an area where we know that a gene actually starts. Okay, the start site of an express gene, which which is basically meaning that 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 is the part where the m RNA starts the messenger the messenger RNA gets read and turned into a protein. So that's an actual beginning of the gene, um, and if and basically you would you would move your you would find that that area of the genome um, through the NCBI NCBI website, and then you would design primers. You want to design the primers so they'll amplify about one kb. Um, about a thousand base pairs. Um, if you can look at about a thousand base pair area, that, that that's a good um, length uh, for the gen machine to sequence whenever you're um, uh, feeding, trying to find the sequence of each of the DNAs just to see the different SNP sites in, in, each, in each sample. Now your agarose gel is going to look something like this. And if you don't get good solid bands, um, DNA bands, you, you don't want to use it because um, you, you can see that sometimes they'll streak and that means that there's actually different lengths of DNA and if, you, and if your primer has worked correctly you should have a single solid band of the same length DNA okay and if you don't get that single solid band um, you better try it again that means that um, you, you've probably got different lengths of DNA and you've probably amplified um, um, different areas or and that, that can happen a lot sometimes with some different primers but um, tr if you get a single solid uh, band like the one I'm fixing to show you then you 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 use it you cut out the DNA and if you will look at this um, next photo here you see that you only you see the ladder to um, to your left okay and and but on the other end you you see the single bands okay that means that it's got one length of DNA that it's actually amplified this this particular area is the area that you're going to um, you're going to need to cut out this one little slide I'll give you a close-up of it you want to cut that 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 DNA out of the agros gel as tightly as you can because you don't want to get a lot of agros in it. it it'll be harder to purify the DNA if you do so cut cut the DNA out of the agros gel as tightly as you can oh, the area that I circled in black is is what I'm talking about you want to make sure that you have a clean sharp scalpel to, to cut this out with because you don't want any kind of contamination so make sure that your scalpel is sharp and clean um, and when you're when you're done cutting it out you want to put it place it place your your DNA in the agro gel place it into a 1.5 microliter tube just like this one and um, then we're ready to begin extracting the DNA from the agro gel Okay, once you get your agarose gel in, you want to um, place an equal amount of the QA, the QG solution. Okay, and basically after that, in order to to melt the agarose gel down so you can get to the DNA, the purified DNA, you're going to have to place it on a heating unit, which this is our heating unit, at 50 degrees. Okay, for 10 minutes. Now during that 10 minute period of time, you need to take it out. Uh, take the DNA and the gel out and then vortex it, mix it, spin it, and then place it back in during that 10 minutes. This is our vortexing unit. And basically to vortex, you just take your DNA, uh, your tube of DNA, you place it in the center like this. You see that? And then you just kind of push down and it's going to mix your DNA, your RNA, your solution, whatever you have in here. And you want to do this during the 10 minutes that you're actually um, heating the agarose gel in order to melt it down to to free the DNA from the agarose gel and usually you, your 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 solution will melt down uh, pretty well during that time if you still see lumps you may have to leave it in for a little while longer um, the agarose has to actually uh, break down to where you can run run your solution through the spin columns um, 
once once the 10 minutes is completed and you have vortexed and you have mixed the DNA, you're going to have to place your DNA into one of these. This is a this is a spin column, and um, that will actually um, spin it down for five minutes in um, centrifuge, and then you'll basically run a buffer through it, a a chiogen buffer, and then once it, that's clean, you will run RNase liquid um, water through the um, through the spin column in order to get your final your final grouping of DNA or basically your final amount of um, nanograms per microliter of DNA that you're going to get. I usually only use about 30 nanograms per microliter of RNA free um, water because I, I, I'm I never sure how much D, DNA you have to be really careful because you don't usually get a whole lot of DNA out of an agro shell so I go real lightly on the water um, um, that I add in, into the spin column on, on my final round because I want to make sure that I've got enough to to sequence it. Once you're done getting your um, your DNA you want to sequence it and once you sequence it, run it through the sequencer, the, the, usually the Gen X is the, the next generation sequencer. And there's actually all different kinds of, of, of sequencers out there. But um, once, you, once you get your, your um, code that you have amplified, um, you, you want to take it to a website online called Chromos. And I'll take you to that website you'll be able to take a look at at your code there and see the possible places that there are SNP sites. Once you get your DNA sequence, you need to place it in this program right here. It's Chromos. It's a and it's online basically. You can download it onto your computer and it'll it'll basically give you a kind of a chart pre printout here of of what of what your DNA sequence integrity is. Basically when these lines are, are really really squiggly down here these little multicolored lines that's showing that the read wasn't real clear uh, but whenever they're very very even and very very straight and there's not a whole lot of squiggly lines um, that means that you got a good read on your DNA that 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 the machine um, uh, had a really good reading in that area so you'll be able to know like the quality of the reading from the machine by using the chromos and whenever you're done with the chromos what you want to do is you want to take all of the DNAs that you um, that you sequence from from each different specimen or each different sample and you want to compare them in in a uh, program called CAP and once you're done compare it, it'll actually compare all of the sequences it'll line them up and um, it, you'll be able to see where where the possible SNP sites are and and that's how you uh, that's how you search for SNPs for SNP sites and as time goes on and technology and biotechnology gets uh, get so much more advanced this is going to become easier and easier and easier for scientists but um, right now this is one of the best ways that we know of to find SNP sites and uh, I hope you get to find one too good luck and that's how you purify DNA from an ag gross gel now don't we all feel like a bunch of geniuses it takes a lot to, to be a genius. And I know I'm not a genius, but I did find a possible SNP site. Take care, everybody. Happy science.